Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit more about Docker and then we'll move back to AWS. But the reason mm -hmm. I want to talk ab about Docker is because, as you said earlier, you started out with Vagrant. You use Vagrant. I use Vagrant every day. I still do today. Mm -hmm. What makes it different than Docker? Or what's oh. the difference between the two? Yeah, so for me, I guess the difference to uh, the difference I see, they're, they're, they both run, you know, uh, you're both, conceptually, you're starting a server in either one of them, right? You know, you're starting a VM with uh, Vagrant, and in, uh, and in Docker, you're starting a Linux container. So uh, the difference really is semantic, you know? Uh, when you start a, a Docker container to the operating system, it looks the same, you know, you, there's the normal set of files that an operating system expects to be there, except they're running, those files are actually like recreated um, in a little file system that is uh, segmented from the, the host. Uh, okay. Uh, whereas Vagrant itself, like each and every time you start Vagrant, you're literally starting up a new VM. Mm -hmm. And so the difference for me, the difference I see uh, from a like everyday development standpoint is the speed at which you can start something up. You know, um, for me, Docker containers are pretty cool because if you want to mess around with this, you know, if you don't know how the sudo uh, the sudoers file works, for example, you can dig around in there, play with the sudoers file, see if how that works, like see how that affects the other users in the application, and if you mess that up. Um, and lock yourself out of the system, it's no big deal. You stop mm -hmm. that container and restart it, and you can do that in seconds. Whereas for me, with Vagrant, the problem I see is that if you're messing around with the sudoers file, you lock yourself out and like yeah. don't allow yeah. root access again. You have to stop that, um, you have to stop that uh, VM and restart it. And the startup penalty to me was pretty high. You know, like you're basically reconfiguring uh, the application uh, all over again. Um, Another good so, point with Docker that I could see is that you've always got the same thing. You've got the exact same box. And so you can distribute that to all the different servers and you know that you're going to have the exact same configurations and all that. And Vagrant kind of does that in a sense as well. But I feel like it's maybe a little bit harder to achieve that, that end result. So, I mean, they, they both achieve the same thing. Mm -hmm. I just feel like when you start a new Vagrant box... Um, you can pull down an image, but ultimately you can't distribute a Vagrant image out to your applications. Yeah. Um, I guess that's the yeah. biggest difference between uh, Vagrant and Docker is that like that end result, that um, container that you've built, the image, I guess, mm -hmm. that you've built, that thing literally can be distributed yeah. out to all your different servers. Mm -hmm. And when you start it there, it's exactly the same as it is on your desktop. Mm -hmm. Whereas Vagrant, you can practice setting up configuration scripts through Chef or um, Ansible or whatever, but you also have to run those scripts on your servers mm -hmm. exactly. um, yeah. uh, all over the place. Yeah. So that's, that's the big difference I see uh, from an operational uh, production standpoint. Yeah. If you have to make a change on Vagrant, you have to reprovision it. Whereas with Docker, you just destroy it and start start over, right? You just boot up a new container. Yeah, but exactly it. Because of the union file system and the way uh, stuff works like that, you kind of like cache these different layers. So if yeah. you're just changing one thing and you want to reprovision, uh, you know, all the steps before that have already been provisioned. So uh, you know, if if you've got a if you've got a Docker file that's you know a hundred lines long and you change the 99th line, the first. Uh, you know, the first 99 lines yeah. are already cached. You yeah. don't have to reprovision or rerun those lines. It's just that last line that I you're see. changing. And that, that's pretty powerful um, when it comes to, like, uh, being iterative and, and, and moving at speed when you're uh, practicing on, on um, your, your configuration setup. Did you have any issues switching from Vagrant to Docker? Um, for me, it was just conceptual stuff, you know? Like, there's a lot, just like anything else, you know, in... in this world, there's a there's a there's a lot of edge cases and a lot of things that you need to understand before you can even do the most basic mm -hmm. thing. Um, Vagrant itself is pretty nice because when you start it up, it is what it is. It's a server, and and you use the normal tools. With um, with Docker, it just seems like there are a lot of things that you have to understand up front. You know, linked linked containers and and volumes and and all that sort of stuff. Even just understanding or grokking how that union file system mm -hmm. works. That's you know. There's a there's a conceptual change that has to happen in your mind, and to me, there's a, a there's a high startup cost, I guess, mm -hmm. for learning Docker. But once you learn it and you, you kind of understand the nuance, I think it's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And in the notes here, I see that you also put networking and deployment as challenges. What do you mean by deployment? What's what's the challenge there with Docker? 
Well, so, I mean, there, there are things that are coming along, I guess, the Stalker Swarm and a couple of these newer uh, things that help with orchestration and setup of, of your Docker containers. You can have a Docker container and it runs locally, but you still need to get it set up and run uh, on your right. server. Yeah. So um, getting it to getting the images to your machine, you know, to your machines and then, um, I guess, routing uh, within the machine itself, if you've got several Docker containers, is more of a challenge because you're, um, you know, you're dealing with you're dealing with networking at a at a box level, mm -hmm. whereas before, you know, with with uh, AWS and with us uh, virtual machines, you know, each machine represents its own little, I guess works in a, in a wider context within the VPC context is all you have to think about your networking. But with Docker, you have to think about your networking at the VPC level. And then you also have to think of it, uh, at the box level as well. If you have several containers, you know, there's port management you need to deal with and there's load balancing as you, uh, start new servers. For example, uh, one of the bigger scripts that, uh, I can talk about later, uh, that we use for deployment of Docker containers, you'll start a Docker container that runs side by side with your other one. You run a uh, systems check to make sure that that Docker container is up and is answering calls. And only then do you take down the currently running, like if you're talking AB and A is your master, you don't start B until you're sure that B is working. Right. And okay. once B is working, you take down A. Mm, that makes sense. So yeah, there are some definitely some challenges and some things that you have to think about. Uh, you know, they're they're all it's all it's all problems. It's just where where are you going to focus your energy and, and where do you think those problems are going to be? And it seems like Docker has really grown in size as far as community goes compared to something like Vagrant. I feel like Vagrant has a really big community. Uh, it's been used by a lot of people. What, is, has there been any difference in that? Uh, to me, it just seems so bleeding edge that sometimes like uh, finding uh, something that works. I guess f solutions could be posted that are three months old and are already outdated. So like yeah. finding the most recent information sometimes is a bit of a challenge, but also there are just so many people that are so in love with the concept of Docker and there are so many evangelists for it that I haven't found it to be any more challenging than Vagrant was uh, to learn. Um, but yeah. then again, I started Vagrant with like zero knowledge of like computer uh, server infrastructure management yeah. and I'm mean, coming into this with a lot more like that part has already been understood by me now it's just like understanding the nuances of of docker within that environment so mm -hmm. yeah maybe it has to do with like my sophistication at this point not to say I'm super sophisticated but <laughs> <laughs> I guess my my I've leveled up at this point and sure. so just now it's just understanding docker not trying to understand like how servers work in general mm. 